Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 5, Episode 1. Here we go again. We've done episodes, and we've done Season 3, 4, time for 5. Let's get started. All right, the first model up is Andy Oliver. She's a chef and broadcaster. And uh, they often will put dark-skinned people in front of yellow. I, I don't know why, but anyway, four hours after the artists begin, there are three artists painting each model. They turn their easels around and look at her reaction. Oh, so adorable. Wow, she was just thrilled. So now let's look at the different paintings. Remember, she's gonna pick one to take home. That has nothing to do with the final judging. All right, here's the first one. It certainly has um, some attitude to it. Um, I'm not, I don't know if I'm even gonna discuss whether or not it has a resemblance to the sitter anymore. That doesn't even seem to be a factor in the program, but that's a beautiful piece of painting, I think, there. There's some, such a tendency with darker skin to go into some purples and, um, and for things to become almost like extreme. But here's a real handling of the neutrals in a really sensitive way. And I do like how she's moved the background around. This is the second one up. Well, here I go with the resemblance. It doesn't look like her. <laughs> the first one looked more like her. But the second one is, um, I like how the light on the left side of her face picks up the, the yellow from behind. So that shows some experience as a painter. That one also has an attitude that I, I enjoy. This is a good painting. I think the thing that's throwing me off is I, I don't like the background. I wish that she had made that yellow, um, I don't wanna say less intense, but varied it. Just that flat yellow kind of flattens the painting. Yeah, you see when you pull back, see how stark it is, what a jump it is between that yellow going to the red. It's almost like um, she went into her primary colors and didn't mix them to modulate them in any way. I'm sure she did, but just isn't how it appears. But it is impactful. This is more the kind of painting that I really respond to where there are layers applied and um, shapes considered as opposed to um, fine features. I, I just find this a really effective painting. See how the yellow's modulated behind her? Yeah, I just I just like that better. Here's a close-up. I think that's just a beautiful, luscious piece of painting there. Does it look like her? Probably not, but um, I'm going to go with it's a resemblance. I don't know. Anyway, let's pull back for a second, because sometimes when you pull back, you get a better idea of the impact. Yeah, yeah, it loses some of the impact on the way out. Although, oh boy, I like the background better than I like the painting. But when I'm close up, I like the painting and the background. But remember, the commission is going to hang on a gallery wall, so it has to read from across the room. And I think each one of these three did. Now she's going to pick one to go home with her. And it really surprised me. I thought she was going to pick the one that we last saw. As usual, hashtag Joe is always wrong. And boy, am I wrong in this episode about the winner. But anyway, here is the one that she picked. Uh, I don't know her reasons, but it doesn't matter. Art is subjective, and she's thrilled to have it. So now we go on to the second sitter. The second sitter is Matthew Gordy, and he is a actor. They're all either actors or musicians. And occasionally there's a writer. Um, certainly good-looking fellow. This is going to be this is going to be tough. I do find the people who are less um, character looking, if you know what I mean, like the prettier and smoother the skin, the harder for me. But um, but anyway, you get on with it. This is Portrait Artist of the Year. Four hours later, they turn their easels around. This looks quite promising. Let's see what we've got. All right, the first one up. Ooh, boy, I'm going to go right out and say it. I do not like this painting. I do not like this painting at all. It looks like an underpainting to me. It. Um, has chalky paint on it. Yes, it has a resemblance to him, but does it have any life in it? Do you feel any life coming from this figure in any way? I don't. So I'm not. I'm not a fan of this this painting at all. And when you pull back, I think it's either even less impactful. Um, it looks like a postage stamp to me. I do not. Uh, I, I could go on and on, but I find this so such an un underwhelming painting, and that's going to play out later. So um, anyway, we'll just let that go. Yeah, we gotta we gotta let it go. We gotta love the program, love the spirit with which everyone approaches this. Yay, art, and 
uh, move on. All right, the next one up is, uh, I want to start with sort of a close-up, and then we'll pull back. See, now this one has a little bit more life in it. Maybe maybe the time constraints are what got to the fellow we just saw where it's so much underpainting and not much actual painting. But this one has, it's, it's like there's some flesh realized here. <laughs> I get the feeling that there's a soul who might be inhabiting this figure. But when we turn back and turn away, whoa, it loses a lot of impact, doesn't it? And as I always say, he's not anchored in. Anchor those shoulders in, even just with a line. Don't have an island surrounded by oceans. I know I say it every time. It just drives me nuts. It's like taxidermy. You know, when, when they put animals' heads on the walls without a context, you know, just this head sticking out of the wall? I don't know. Maybe it's an OCD thing, but it really bugs me. Now, when we come in close, that's a beautiful piece of painting right there. That's really carefully and sensitively done. That's a, that's a beautiful job. And I think that, just that section, really captures him. So I don't know which one he's going to pick to take home, uh, but we have one more to look at. Uh, the next one is a much more colorful painting. And this is what I talk about with color value swap outs. We all know there's no cerulean blue on someone's actual face, but it can be used as a color value swap out for some darker, uh, darker shapes. Um, it does not look like him. Uh, there's just no way around it. Um, I mean, there's a resemblance, but it doesn't look like him. But of course, I like the, that um, that color is used here, and uh, he's not afraid of color intensity and making those swap outs. Now, I don't know what happens when you pull back. All that color value swap out stuff kind of got lost, and all of a sudden it looks quite chalky. I have no explanation for that. I find it a little bit odd. But let's see which one Matthew picks to take home. And, oh boy, this really surprised me. It's the one I wouldn't have picked, but this is the one that he picked. So that's going home with him. Now we're going to go on to the third sitter. The third sitter is a favorite actress of mine. She shows up in small parts all the time. Well, bigger parts, but she's pretty much always the second banana, if you know what I mean. I've seen her be evil. Geraldine James is her name. I've seen her be evil. I've seen her be kind and lovely. <laughs> I've seen her age into her 80s. Uh, she's a real transformative actress. But look at that bone structure. Ooh, I would kill for that bone structure. Wow. A real, you know, what, what we would call a very classic beauty. So four hours into the program, the artist turned the easels around and let's see what they come up with. Now, the background behind her was very odd, and once again, it, it does seem like the artists, for the most part, ignore the backgrounds. The first painting up, I flat out adore it. I adore this painting. Nothing's gonna convince me that this isn't perfect in every way. When I saw this, I thought, we don't need any more episodes. <laughs> this person has already won the program. I adore her and wanna figure out how to follow her. It's just, it's full of sensitivity, it's full of mood, it's, it's, the colors are beautiful and not chalky. I, I just absolutely love it. And even when you pull back, it has impact to me. I, I, I would, I just think this was the best artist of the bunch. It's just hands down. But um, yes, I, I am biased. So I'm just going to come right out and say it. I think this beautiful piece of painting and it looks just like her. This one suffers from really Poor drawing. It does not look like her at all. The drawing, the proportions are wrong. I mean, you know, if you don't have a good base to work on, then when you start putting paint on top of it, it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. Kind of like if you're stacking a cake for a wedding and your first tier is off kilter, everything else is going to be off kilter. So I don't have a lot to say about this. You can see how young the artist is. So I don't know how much experience he has. I always admire people for their bravery. I think at one point, one of the judges called this a gritty bit of painting. Yeah, gritty. I would call it that. I don't want gritty art. All right, on to the next one. This one. Oh, you can see what it suffers from, right? That left eye. What was going on with that left eye? You can't. You cannot. You cannot leave the left eye that way. I mean, clearly it looks like she got her eye poked out. Probably from the BB gun she got at Christmas, but... Anyway, but it has other problems too. The actual proportions on the lower face were not correct. They were on the top, but not on the bottom. And there was something about the actual orb of her head that was a little bit off. So, um, you know, if I cover up that eye, 
the rest of the painting is that's being done is really good, but she's got a ways to go before she really is ready for this program. But let's see which one Geraldine picks, and to my delight, she picked the one I would have picked. Uh, I want this painting. I just, mm, it just makes my heart swim. Just absolutely beautiful. And also a signature style. I haven't seen somebody kind of do this moody, kind of almost like seeing the person through a veil thing. It's just beautiful. All right, final judging. The final judging is when all of the artists are considered, but only three go on to the semifinals, which is this, ep one, this episode, but only one will come out as the winner for this episode, who goes on to the, semi, the real semifinals, which will be coming up, uh, usually episode eight or nine. Yay, they picked this one. I thought, yep, they're on track. This is going to be a great year. They're going to pick this one. This is going to be the artist who wins the episode. How could it not be? Well, you know, hashtag Joe is wrong. It's not going to be. This one holds up better here than it did when we pulled back before. But mm, it's, um, for me, I'm going to forget it as soon as I finish this recap. There's just nothing nothing memorable about it. And they love this piece of painting. I think what they loved about this piece of painting is that the drawing that the artist did was extremely good and he spent a lot of time on the drawing and didn't have much time for the painting. So now let's go on to the second part of the judging, which is where they look at the piece, which was a self-portrait, a digital self-portrait is what they judge to get you into the program. Now on the left is a self-portrait of the artist and on the right is what she did today. Holy smokes, huge difference, right? I think this spooked the judges. I think when they saw the self-portrait where she had all the time in the world to work on it and it looked kind of spooky and weirdish, I think it, it made them tremble a little bit and they thought, oh, I'm not sure that this person can really bring it all the way home especially considering that the painting, as far as they're concerned, is a little bit out of focus. But I don't care. I love it. All right, on to the next one. Where first, we see the digital self-portrait, where they have way more time. And this looked exactly like her, even when she was on the program. So she, she can do a better job when she has all the time in the world. So um, I'm just I'm, I'm going to go with my theory on this particular judging is that they're re I, I felt like they were really judging the self-portraits more than the portraits that they did today in the four hours and that is of course because the final uh, prize is a commission that is going to go in a national gallery and the judges don't want egg on their face they've got to find somebody who can really do the job although in the end that will be eight different painters. We don't know who that will be yet. All right, now this one. Now this one, see, this is where I feel like what they did was they looked at the self-portrait and they, they said, I think they judged the self-portraits against each other and how successful they would be on a final commission. I do not believe for one second that that painting on the right was really judged as the best effort of the day. So I need to get over my feelings about this really being a program where they judge what the artists do on that day and consider that they're looking they're looking at other resources as well. All right, so the winner is dun, 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 you already know. It's a painting that I think I said earlier. I might have used the word hate. I don't think I did. I wouldn't use the word hate. That is too that is too negative. I don't ever want my channel to be negative negative, but I do not like this painting. <laughs> Not only is it an underpainting, not really a painting, has no life in it at all. Yes, it looks like him, so yay on that. But I wouldn't even want that in my house. I just find it, like I said, it's a postage stamp. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color, and we will go on to episode two. Oh, and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you would, or give me a thumbs up. Turns out thumbs up on YouTube are real important. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.